mysterious and scary stories that are being told about it. Some say that several kids have disappeared in that place, and now their souls exist in the bodies of the animatronics. While others say that many people have mysteriously died in its walls, and no one can explain those deaths. And some think that this place is simply cursed. With each year, more of these stories are being spread and told. But is there any truth behind them? Well, if you want to find an answer to this question, we will have to travel back in time to the year 1987. That same year, when almost in every newspaper could be found an article about some strange incident titled Bite of 87.
This story starts with a tragedy. When five innocent children were kidnapped from Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, and no one could find them. Time flew, but despite their efforts, the police were still unable to find any information about the missing children. And then one day, three strangers, who were driven by the same desire to uncover the truth, decided to start their own investigation. It was hard to say, was it a coincidence or was it intended by fate? But on the same day, in the same place, these three strangers met each other. And that place was the pizzeria from where the children were kidnapped. Among those strangers was a police detective by the name Brian Clark, the person who couldn't just witness the unsuccessful work of his colleagues and decided to start his own investigation off the book. Another stranger was a private detective by the name Jeremy Fitzgerald, a master of his craft who was hired by a mother of a missing child. The last stranger was me, Linda Jones, a news reporter from Arkham Advertiser, the person who was planning, no matter what, to discover the truth and find the missing kids. And also to find out what really happened to my colleague and good friend, Ben Richard, who was brutally murdered while working on this case before me. Since we all had the same goal, we decided to join our forces and discover the truth behind the children's disappearance together. Yet, there are secrets, doors to which should never be opened. In total, our team consisted of four people. There was me, Brian, Jeremy, and Vincent. Vincent was a humble and quite unsociable man who was working for Brian. While being undercover, he was working as a day shift security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and was providing us with useful information. Our target was the owner of the pizzeria, Daniel Smith, or rather to say his office. Based on Vincent's information, there was a secret room located in that office behind which we were expecting to find the missing children, or at least some information about them. To get in that secret room, you had first to press a hidden button beneath Daniel's table. That would set off a mechanism which would open a way to the locked door. A key to that locked door was always with Daniel Smith on his neck. Yet, that was not a big problem for us, as almost every lock could be easily broken. And luckily, I was a specialist in that. As for Daniel Smith himself, not much was known about him. Only that a few years back, he inherited the family business from his father after he died. Daniel Smith also had a younger brother, by the name Fritz Smith. Yet he had gone missing several months ago, and nobody had seen him since then. According to Brian's words, Daniel Smith was a true evil in the flesh, the person who we should all be afraid of. Brian used to interrogate him several times in the past, and based on his words, never in his life has he seen such an evil and dangerous look as he witnessed in Daniel Smith's eyes. But Daniel Smith was not our main problem. Something else created by him was causing a bigger threat to us. And because of those things, 
we were not able to simply break into the pizzeria in the middle of the night. Hard to imagine how Daniel Smith was able to create those animatronics and make them freely move around the pizzeria during the night. But in case they saw someone, they would immediately attack him. Due to that, one thing was obvious. Getting in there during a night without any help from inside would be too dangerous. But we quickly managed to find a solution to this problem. Through the entire week, every night, we were actively making diversions near the pizzeria, and those kind of actions eventually would achieve their goal, as it forced Daniel Smith to hire a night shift security guard to look after the pizzeria and straight away inform him if anything happens. And thanks to our efforts, Jeremy was hired to this position as a night shift security guard. Yet even though we now had our people inside, still getting into Daniel Smith's office turned out not to be an easy task. Starting on the first night, everything went not according to plan. Jeremy said that it was too dangerous for me to get inside of the building, as he still could not understand how exactly those animatronics were moving around the pizzeria and with what time frame. okay down there. Well, there's one way to find out. Hey, Jeremy, are you still alive down there? Of course. Do you already expect me to die soon? Who knows? Who knows? So, how are things down there? Well, right now, I look at the monitors, drink coffee, and play with a mask of a... I think it's a bear. Yep. With the mask of the bear? Yeah, I know. It might sound funny, but according to the pizzeria owner's words, if those animatronics see me, I have to put it on straight away, since then they will consider me as one of their own and won't try to attack me. Of course, it does sound stupid, but just in case, I keep it close to me. It does sound funny. Anyway, keep us informed if something happens. Will do. Over. What do you think? Will we find those five missing kids in there? I hope. And by the way, there were actually six of them. Six? Yes, the boy named Timmy. It was a quite old and very complicated case, way before me. All I know is that that missing kid, how to say this properly, he was not mentally healthy and due to that, almost zero information was presented to the public. That is weird. I had done some research before, but haven't seen anything about the sixth one. This is strange. Trust me, I know the feeling. But we live in Arkham, and here, strange things are common. But don't worry, I bet soon we will find those kids or at least some information about their fate. We just need to get into that room. We will. That's the spirit. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for your advice, Vincent. I'll be sure to do so. Okay, let's see, what's going on down there? Hmm? Where did you go? Daniel Smith was not lying, and the mascot mask did help. But as we soon will find out, there was something else in that pizzeria, 
which would not be fooled by that mask. <laughs> On the second night, things went smoother, as I was able to sneak in. Yet, as soon as I got in, new obstacles appeared in my way. Despite the fact that Jeremy was assured that he accurately learned the behavior and movement routes of those animatronics, as soon as I got in, they all began a targeted hunt for me. All right, Linda, it seems to be clear. You may go. It is impossible to convey the shock I felt when I saw them. I was certain that I was doomed. Yet to my surprise, they stayed motionless. For more than three hours, I had to be in that room with them, all the time staring at their terrifying appearance, while being afraid to look away, and at the same time, hearing constant footsteps behind the door. imagine how I didn't lose my mind that night. In the end, when it all went quiet, Jeremy helped me to get out from that horrible room. As later on we would find out from Vincent, those were the old models of animatronics from the previous pizzeria, who were kept here for spare parts. still not able to reach Daniel Smith's office. But at least now I had some knowledge of what to expect from this place. At least I believed so, but I was wrong. As on the third night, we had faced new and more serious problems. All right, I think you're clear to go. Just wait for my signal and then rush towards the door next to you. Ready, steady, and... What in the world? Come on, go away already. And who in the world are you?
Jeremy? Is it clear? Can I go? Hey guys, what's going on down there? Do you need my help? No, it is better for you to stay in the car and make sure that we don't have any unexpected visitors. I'll try to find out what is going on down there on my own. to describe what we witnessed that night. Was it just a malfunction? Or something else that made the older versions of the animatronics start a hunt for us? Based on Vincent's words, there was no way old animatronics could be activated as there was not a power source in them. Yet, we were certain in what we witnessed that night. And those visions of the girl. She was among the missing kids. What was really going on in that pizzeria? Yet, despite all the difficulties and fears, we were still not planning to give up. But on the fourth night, things went even worse. Those things are trying to break inside, but I managed to hold them off. Hold on there. I'll try to distract them. I think there's no need in that. I managed to build a small barricade here, so it should withstand. You better try to get to Daniel's office. Okay. to survive that night, physically. As for our mental condition, well, here everything was worse. It was already hard to understand what was real and what was just a trick of our imaginations. For some reason, animatronics in Pizzeria were acting differently. Those who were newer models were simply wandering in the Pizzeria at night and only tried to attack when they noticed a human. While older versions of animatronics were purposefully trying to get to Jeremy, and it seemed that only he was interesting to them. This all had something to do with that weird looking animatronic in the form of a puppet, who was definitely in charge of the others. And those visions that it showed me, in all of them, I have seen a missing girl by the name Elsa. That same girl whose mother hired Jeremy to find her. All of this was so confusing. But on the other hand, there were five missing kids 
and the same amount of animatronics right now were trying to get to Jeremy. What if? But that would then mean that we are already too late. No, no, I don't want to believe in that. The fifth night was expecting us ahead. The night when we finally achieved our goal. Most likely, I won't be able to get out of this one. So here's what you should do. Straight away, go to the office of Daniel Smith and finish what we started. What? No! I am not leaving you! Listen to me, don't worry. Just use the opportunity you have right now and finish this. This is the most right and important thing to do right now. I'm sure you understand that and tell Elsa's mother that I did the best I could to find her daughter. Jeremy? <laughs> Jeremy! Goodbye, Linda. <laughs> Elsa, stop! I know this is you, and that close to you, is Emmy, Felix, Thomas, and Carl. End all of this. Please. We are not your enemies. We only want to find those who are responsible for what happened to you and punish them. Your families have not forgotten about you, and they still hope that you will return home. Elsa, your mother hired this man to find you. be true. Those were souls of the missing kids in the animatronics. And not only did they allow us to go, but also helped us in clearing the path to Daniel Smith's office. I was able to pick the lock, and finally, we managed to get inside of that room. But, as it turned out, we were not alone in there. dark in here. I'll try to find the light switch. Okay. <laughs> Linda, are you okay? Yeah. 
I uh, am fine. How in the world did he get in here? What? Another door? Why hasn't Vincent mentioned anything about it to us? No idea. Look, he is still alive. What are you doing here? Leave at once. I've already called the police. Jeremy, grab the key from his neck and open the door. I'll press the button beneath the table in the meantime. All right. What? No! What are you doing? Stop! I... By no means, do not open that door. That way all behind. Please, please, stop until it's too late. You have no idea what you're doing. Stop. I... No, you have to stop. I beg you. If you need money, they're, they're take from the table. Just do not open the door. There are moments in this life when you are so confident in the rightness of your actions that not even for a second do you consider the option that you might be wrong. And this kind of blindness sometimes might lead to a very tragic turn of events. All right, let's see. What's hidden behind this door? Linda, it's better for you to stay here and keep an eye on Daniel, just in case. As you say, Jeremy, what do you see in there? Any signs of the kids? No. There's just a table with some sort of chest on it. And there's some creepy looking animatronic as well. But it seems that he's motionless. We're on the same side with them now, correct? Looks that way. Please, stop him until it's too late. Okay. I'll try to find out what's inside this chest. What in the world?
Jeremy, no, no, no. No, no, no. Hold on, I'll cover the wound. And then we will get you out of here. I, I never wanted anything of this. After all, I was never like them. This mad thirst for violence and cruelty. This belief in the old ones. Why, why did my younger brothers have to follow the footsteps of our father? Brothers? What are you talking about? You only have one brother. There is also a stepbrother. The one that used to always clean after Fritz. Listen to me. We have to try and stop him before he gets outside. Otherwise, dozens will die. Bullets will not stop him. Only fire can. Please, I need your help as I'm not in the condition to fight him. Up there on the shelf, you may find alcohol bottles. Out of them, you may create a Molotov cocktail. You'll find lighter fluid there as well, near the ashtray. I suppose you understand what I'm asking you to do. In the meantime, I'll look after you, friend. All right, I'll do it. Thank you. If you knew how to stop that thing, why did you keep it in that room? It's not easy. Only he could stop my brothers from entering that room, as there's something in there that by no means should get into their hands. Hurry up! Until more innocent people die, I'll look after your friend, and as soon as you return, I give you my word, I'll answer all of your questions.
Daniel, we have to take Jeremy and get out of here. Brian? But how? I should have known that you and Fritz were behind all of this. You madmen. You both should be locked in Arkham Asylum. Oh, Linda, please be so kind to wait for a moment. I have to end something. Daniel, you've always been a disgrace to our father. But don't worry, I know how to fix that. Linda, I'm so glad to see that you're alive. Why? So you could kill me yourself? What? I would never hurt you. Yet, I cannot say the same about my younger brother. Don't worry, you're just paralyzed. I just... I couldn't let you go before I confessed to something. You see, I wasn't too honest with you. Because when we first met, I was planning to kill you. But then Jeremy showed up and ruined all of my plans. Yet, as it turned out, it was all for the best. Who would have thought that you and Jeremy not only would help us to get into that hidden room, but would also help us to get rid of our older brother, find the scapegoat, and what is most important, to get rich. Just so you know, this place is insured, and you've just set it on fire. Funny, you're just like your colleague, Ben Richard. He also didn't know when to stop, and no matter what, was willing to get to the truth. But in the end, what have you both accomplished? You haven't changed anything. You didn't manage to save anyone. Your desire to learn the truth only got you killed, and nothing more. Yeah, well, anyway, I guess it's time to say goodbye. We have to leave this place before it burns down. And also, I have to arrest Jeremy before he dies. As of now, he's responsible for kidnapping the kids, killing Daniel Smith, and all other bad things that happened here. Well, it's time for us to go. Goodbye, Linda. And don't get cold in there. Who would have thought that our story will have such a horrifying and sad end? Well, right now. That and pursuing the right goals and only having good intentions, you may achieve completely the opposite results. When not good triumphs over evil, but the opposite. But sooner or later, they will pay for their crimes. They have to, as there will be those who will put an end to this evil once and for all. Unfortunately, I will not live to see that day.
was a kind, honest, and sincere person who believed in good. Yet on that night, it was evil that had triumphed over good. And in that moment, when Linda's last breath left her body, also with it vanished all the kindness and trustfulness that was in Elsa. And instead of those feelings came anger and cruelty. The events that happened after were merciless and bloody, but let's hear about them from Elsa herself. And for us to have a full picture, let's travel back to that day when Elsa and other children were kidnapped by the so-called Purple Man. day when me and my mom came to this magical place. What a day it was! Happiness, joy, and laughter were everywhere. It was 
was the first time I saw Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy. Oh, how miraculous it all was. And then, you showed up. True evil in the flesh. The cunning devil who kidnapped me and many others. The monster who we started calling the purple guy. Pizzeria's playroom. That was the place where you kidnapped us. And that was the place where you had your secret room. I always knew that people were searching for us. For days and nights, we were screaming and calling for help. Help us! Help! We are here! Hoping that someone would hear us. heard us. And help never came. However, I didn't lose hope, as I always knew that I would get out, no matter what. And then, one day, by some miracle, you forgot to lock the door. And we managed to escape. Yet, our freedom didn't last for long. As it was all just a part of your sick plan. All the doors were locked, while you were calmly pursuing and capturing us. in this room of torment and suffering. And when all the other kids lost their hope and accepted their fate, I still was not planning to give up. Anger and hatred filled my soul towards you because of everything you had done to us. I knew that I would get out of this room and get my revenge no matter the cost. My soul will not rest until you receive your deserved retribution. Hours turn to days, days turn to months, months turned to years. We did not manage to escape, and no one rescued us. My body has been long dead. But my soul was still alive. The soul which was now driven by only one desire. Revenge. And I was not alone. Through decades, our souls tried to get you. But you always managed to escape. There were a lot of deaths during this time, some caused by your actions, and some by ours. Because of you, we became monsters ourselves. <laughs> Monsters who brought horror, 
Aunt Death. <laughs> you thought that you were invincible. Yet with every year, our powers got stronger. While you were getting older and weaker. And in the end, we managed to get you. Finally, you got what you deserved. You always used to laugh in the face of death when you tortured and killed others. Yet now, when you face the death yourself, where is that smile? There is none. There is only fear and pain in your eyes. And while your body is bleeding out, and you are almost at the last breath, I finally feel that our souls can rest in peace. At last, we are free. As for you, your soul will never find peace. Eternal torment and suffering awaits you, and the dungeon you created for others will become your prison from now on. Nightmare is far from its end. The worst is yet to come. But what happens next is a completely different story, which shall be told to you next time. Since Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, Stale has many mysteries hidden in it. As for Elsa and other kidnapped children, their souls finally achieved peace and left the walls of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria once and for all. Same happened with the soul of the sixth kid. Despite all that madness, anger, and sadness that was living within him, he still managed to find peace and tranquility. In the end, it was Linda who helped him with that. As for Linda, her soul now exists in the walls of burnt-out Pizzeria. 
waiting for someone who will be able to see and hear her. And it seems that finally, this day has come. But as it was told before, that is a story for the next time. Thank you for watching our video. And if you like our videos, then please don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons. You may also support us on Patreon if you wish our project to grow bigger.